welcome at this new episode of Yoontech Explorations. Today we are going to dive into digital happiness in 2018. We are only halfway through February, but there already happened some really interesting events regarding digital happiness. For example, on the 6th of January, there was an open letter published by Apple shareholders urging Apple to be innovative again on the field of digital happiness. The shareholders were holding $2 billion dollars of Apple shares and they summarized all the research regarding digital happiness, regarding the impact of digital on our well-being and they con concluded we need to do something about this. We don't like it when our children are holding your product, your iPhone in their hands all the time. We don't feel comfortable um, because we know that uh, a lot of apps are just trying to get their attention all the time. They are just trying to make addictive uh, programs. So Apple, be innovative again, be the technology leader in digital happiness. Then on the 12th of January, Facebook announced massive changes. They said, we lost touch with, with our main goal. Um, we want to create meaningful relationships again. We want to prioritize posts from family, uh, posts with engagement, with a lot of comments. We want to prioritize those kind of posts uh, above advertising. So that's an interesting change because the whole business model of Facebook is advertising, of course. This announcement came after Facebook saw its first uh, drop ever in daily active users in the US and Canada. So that is probably one of the reasons they announced the changes. At the end of January, we had a really interesting event in Davos, Switzerland, from the World Economic Forum, with a lot of uh, technology leaders and a lot of world leaders. So politics meets business. And there were a lot of interesting discussions. One of them was about trusting technology. Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce urged governments to take control again of the big tech companies. So that's interesting that somebody from, somebody from the business urges governments to take control again. And in February, we saw that the Center for Humane Technology saw its daylight with a lot of interesting people collaborating, ex-Google employees, Lyft employees, Roger McNamee, he is the ex-advisor of Mark Zuckerberg, and all these bright minds are working together um, to create humane technology. So less manipulation and more meaningful technology. So these are all really interesting events. And the question for today is, what is happening and why is this happening now? So let's find out. taking this seriously. Three reasons come to mind. Uh, the first one is the quest for more meaningful work. The second one is globalization, uh, powerful companies. And the third one is uh, the impact of technology is increasing. So let's start with the first one, the quest for more meaningful work. Rebecca Henderson, Professor of General Management and Strategy Units on Harvard University, sees that millennials have a growing role in the workforce. This is logical, of course, because millennials are getting older and are getting more jobs. Um, the interesting thing she sees is that um, these millennials, her students, uh, demand more positive impact from organizations. They find it really important that they are working for an organization that has a positive social mission, a positive social vision, and they are really looking on the impact on the environment and society. Aaron Hurst, the author of The Purpose Economy, sees the same happening. He sees that purpose and meaning uh, are the new drivers of the economy, that millennials and the next gen generation, the iGen generation, are really looking to have a positive impact. And he sees this happening in the Makers Movement, in which People want to reconnect with the product, but also in the sharing economy, in which people want more uh, meaningful relationships again, and that 
people are value, valuing uh, experience more than material objects. So it's also about the experience. You don't buy a product anymore, but you want to buy a whole experience. So the second reason more companies are taking digital happiness seriously is because of the globalization. Technology is everywhere. Uh, physical boundaries don't mean anything anymore. And we see that uh, some companies have a lot of influence. Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet, Microsoft, but also Alibaba, uh, Xiaomi, Tencent and Baidu. They are reaching a lot of uh, consumers. This is partly because of the network effects. The more people are on a platform, the more valuable the platform becomes. And this creates a winner-takes-all environment. And this begs the question if these platforms should be treated as public spaces, like public television, newspapers and universities, because this is where the people are. It's really difficult to compete with uh, a platform like Facebook. So these few companies have a lot of impact on our lives. And people are starting to realize this and they are starting to have discussions about this in private but also on television and in the paper. So this brings us to the third point, the power of technology is increasing. It's often explained with exponential technology, but this expression is becoming almost a meaningless uh, one-liner because it's used so often. But think about it. Look at the Middle Ages when a farmer was born. Uh, he grew up and when he died, almost nothing changed. The way, the method to grow crops and the method to travel was just the same. Nothing changed. And now, when I look at the first 10 years of my life, I see less developments than in the last 10 years of my life. So it's become tangible. I can feel the change is getting faster. And we see more and more coverage in the news of all these technology breakthroughs. Last year we had a, a lot of news about CRISPR-Cas, uh, a new DNA editing method. And we just had the Winter Olympics, which we saw uh, skiing robots. Uh, we see robots holding doors open for each other. And we see uh, police officers wearing augmented reality glasses. So the power of technology is increasing, technology is coming everywhere and we are noticing that and of course we are asking the question then, what do we want with this technology? So these are three reasons why digital happiness is taken more seriously by companies and why we see digital happiness as a trend in the digital landscape. The fundamental question around sustainable business remains how companies can bridge the gap between their own apparent self-interest and the broader needs of society. I think the context in which this question needs to be answered is that we are living in an increasingly transparent world. The downside is that there's almost no privacy anymore. The positive side is that scandals are getting more and more revealed. Hashtag me too, hashtag the Russian doping scandal, you name it. On the same time, trust is on an all time low. The Edelman Trust Barometer, who measures trust every year uh, all over the world, sees there's an implosion of trust. There's no trust in media, in government, in NGOs, in business. And this is creating tension in society. I think companies really need to take this seriously. That we need uh, to create a positive vision in which we truly want to have a positive impact on the lives of our customers. We don't uh, want to just make them addicted to our products, but really create something meaningful. I, I think this can give you a really competitive advantage on the short term, on the long term. Um, so yeah, let's create digital happiness. You, me and our colleagues, I think we have some awesome work to do. If you like the, the video, please consider subscribing and I hope to see you the next time. Bye.